Welcome to Workshop Topics, modifying large industrial type lathe tools to use in a home workshop. In the larger of my three lathes, the Smart and Brown, I find this tool to be the best one. It has a slight negative rake which means it takes a bit more pushing through the work but it gets a great finish. I recently used this in my a large model showman's engine series and it did most of the work making a stainless steel cylinder cover for the engine. These are some carbide tip inserts and they are designed to fit a larger version of the lathe tool that you've just seen. When I put them side by side you can clearly see that the inserts in the blue box are much larger than the insert that is in the tool. But the great thing about these cutting tools, apart from the fact you can use them for facing, longitudinal turning and even as a chamfer tool, is they always seem to get a great finish and you can use each of the tips six times. Often because of the design you cannot do this with quite a lot of carbide tips. The lathe tool that's currently fitted into the quick change tool holder originally started out life having a shaft that was 16mm thick. It didn't fit in the tool holder and I couldn't get centre height, so I had to machine some away from the bottom of it. I'm just unwrapping the lathe tool that I bought, just so I can show how much larger it is than the one I'm currently using. The lathe tool on the left has a 20mm square shank. And as I've just mentioned, the one on the right hand side used to be 16mm square. In this short video I'm going to do two things. One is I'm going to machine the new tool so it fits in the tool holder and I'll be able to use it on the Smart and Brown lathe. And I'm going to further machine the one that I took down from the 16mm square shank so that this lathe tool will fit in the smaller quick change tool holder that I use in the Boxford lathe. Both of these lathe tools use exactly the same design. The tip is supported in its centre hole and then clamped in place by the larger clamp. When I look closely at the new lathe tool, mainly because it's bigger and I can actually see it, I can understand how it works. Initially when I tried to fit a tip on this tool it just wouldn't fit and then I realised why there was a second allen key. If you turn this fitting that's normally in the centre of the tip, it's slightly eccentric and it holds the tool very firmly against the main tool shank. Or at least it does when you rotate it with the allen key, then you simply use the other allen key to clamp the tip down at the rear. Which means that this particular carbide tip tool has very securely fitted carbide tips which is always a good thing. Here's the model number of the larger one, and as you can see, it is a good bit larger than the other. These are very much industrial grade tools, designed for hard work over long periods. But with a bit of effort in the home workshop, and I must warn you that this job is not easy, but you can get good results and turn down the shank to put a larger lathe tool in a smaller tool holder. A friend of mine once bought me a special finishing tool that took carbide tips, that was also 20mm square and I machined that down but unfortunately the tips were really weird, they were very long and only gave you two chances at cutting. I intend to make this tool the same thickness as the one that's fitted into my tool holder. I set a caliper to the size that I wanted and by using this caliper I use it as a scriber to mark the paint. I need to reduce the thickness of the second lathe tool to the same as the one in the tool holder. I'll leave the carbide tip in place because it's not going to get in the way. Although I suppose if I was a proper engineer I would remove that. The first part of this cutting operation is how not to do it. Do not use any kind of a milling cutter unless it's a carbide tipped one. This one isn't and even though I lubricated the piece of metal it soon blunted the tool. When I bought my milling machine in the mid 1980s, yes it is that old, I got this with it. And it's a special face cutter with five carbide tips that are all replaceable, but I've never replaced them. And as you can see, one or two of them are quite chipped. In the past I've used it for reducing the thickness of quite a lot of pieces of metal, including steam chest covers, steam chests, cylinder port faces, and of course lathe tools. 
Here it is in action a good while ago when I repaired a Southworth steam pump. This is the series that this extract is taken from. Over now to the milling machine for the fun part. I'm using a face cutter and I'm going to clean up the port face with this. When you machine cast iron in the home workshop it's a good idea to make sure that you don't have the cutter revolving too fast. I've clamped the cylinder tightly into the machine vise as squarely as I can get it to fit. But the first thing I do before I start the machine is run the cutter across the port face to see where it's touching. It's not perfect but I don't think the machining of the original port face was perfect either. My old milling machine doesn't have any auto feeds to traverse the table I'm winding the handle. First of all I wind it quite fast in order to rough cut the part and remove the corrosion but I'm only removing a very small amount of metal at each pass. In the end, as a guess, I think I removed 15 to 20 thou to get through the corrosion which was deeper than it first looked. It won't be a problem though, when the engine's reassembled the 20 thou is nothing to worry about because don't forget, when I reassemble this engine I'm fitting gaskets. And the tool that you've just seen me using was of course this one. And now once again it's fitted into the milling machine for machining some much tougher metal than cast iron. If I was discussing and showing music, I could speak with authority on that because I have had training in the past, but I've had no training in this sort of thing. And I'm really puzzled why it's doing what it's doing. First of all, it's not burning out. I've used plenty of lubricant this time on the tool shank. And that's not smoking very much, not like it did when I was turning on the lathe when I made the cylinder cover. And I find this a bit of a puzzle because at the moment there are five carbide tips hammering away at this. And the work is getting nowhere near as hot as the piece of metal in the lathe. I always keep the belts on my milling machine a little bit on the slack side so if anything goes wrong at least it doesn't smash everything up and catapult bits of metal at me. What I'm about to do is take quite a deep cut so I've sprayed some lubricant on the work but look what's happening, it's just like November the 5th, well in a small way, it's a bit like a Catherine wheel. I'm going to increase the video speed because this did actually take quite a long time. This is near the end of the operation, I'd already removed the tool from the machine vise and used my one inch belt sander to clean up the sharp edges. Then I refitted it like this to finish it and clean it up again on the one inch belt sander. Then I repeated the process on the other lathe tool to remove a little bit more of the shank. Finally, just before I lost the will to live and my winding arm was getting weaker, note to self, maybe I should buy a milling machine with a power feed. But no, I need the exercise. This is the largest of the two lathe tools and it's fitted into the tool holder, which in turn is fitted to my Smart and Brown lathe. I set it to centre height and it turns beautifully. I took slightly more off the tool than I intended, I think it's possibly about 13 millimetres thick, it doesn't really matter. The tool holder is sat in the tool post at exactly the right place. This is a small Myford lathe tool and it's very good and it's what I would normally use in the Boxford lathe, but now I can take it up a notch. I just have to wait a few minutes because the lathe tool is quite hot, after being cut down, but not really that hot. It's just a bit too hot even for my steam engine proof fingers. I let the lathe tool cool some more and fitted it into the tool post tool holder. I'm going to show how I would normally set the centre height on a lathe tool in a quick change tool post. This is a piece of brass, very easy to machine and as fast as possible I run the tool to the centre and as you can see it's slightly below centre height because there's a bit still sticking out. I'll lift the position of the tool slightly and try again. And it's still minutely under centre height. I'm demonstrating though that it still cuts alright and it's going to be really useful for jobs like this freeform turning of curves. This is not up to my usual standard though. You arrive at a curve by turning the hand wheel that moves the saddle up and down the lathe and the hand wheel on the cross slide. 
One bonus of these type of tools is the fact that if you rotate the tool post it works very well as a chamfer tool also. And this once again saves time. I'm all into saving time. Unfortunately I'm not into machining for the sake of it. But that doesn't mean I don't have respect for people who do. There's one man called Dave who's in my list of Facebook friends and his machining is just surreal. And he builds absolutely beautiful large-scale traction engines to an engineering standard that I can only dream about. Luckily, I think I'm best at what I do best, which is, thankfully, music. A while ago, I made a painting video, and I used a piece of music that I put together using a repeated sequence of six notes, and I said, this is a repeated sequence of six notes. By repeating the sequence and listening to it and relaxing, you can actually lower your blood pressure and heart rate. It works for me anyway. And there is always someone who has to make a comment when the videos go public on YouTube. Comment was, didn't like the music, it was too repetitive. Please excuse me while I throw myself off a high public building. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.